Okay, welcome back, everybody. Um, I want to say a quick thank you to staff and to um, Jim and Nick's. We had some <laughs> a great dinner tonight. Um, we, it's nice to support local facilities. So um, uh, hopefully, everybody uh, won't nobody will fall asleep after having a full stomach. So uh, the next part that we're going to talk about is economic development, and we are very happy to, to welcome you tonight to. I don't know how we might. Do you have any intros or anything yeah, you want to say? Uh, just, just to give, familiarize yourself with the uh, packet here. Uh, you do have the the existing contract that that the, between the county and uh, Economic Development Corporation. Uh, also in there is the uh, existing in incentive grant policy that uh, that the EDC currently uses when they are doing their recruiting. Um, and again, we, we brought Mr. Uh, Carol Gray in. If you haven't met Carol, he is the uh, interim director for uh, for the chamber and uh, the EDC. And uh, reports are in so far that he's doing a, a fantastic job. So we're, we're excited you're here. And, and if you don't know him, he came from Charlotte and he, he was there for 20 some, 20, over 20 years or something. Yeah, so. And uh, so we're lucky to have him here as the interim. Uh, so now uh, their their board, both the chamber boards and the economic development board, are are moving forward in, in trying to uh, help Carol no longer be the interim and, and, and actually put somebody in his place to do a permanent job. But uh, so wanted him to come in, talk to you a little bit about what they do now, based on the current agreement, based on the current policies. How are they recruiting? Are they doing just you know? out-of-town recruitment, what are we doing for local businesses, that type of thing. Uh, just touch base on that. What's going on in the, in the world, what's going on in the state, and what's going more, and even more importantly, what's going on right next door to us, and, and sort of give us an update there. And then have an opportunity for you guys to talk a little bit. In the back here are our guys uh, from our tax <coughs> department who also, from incentives, when, when, you, when the board approves incentives, they go to these three guys back here. And they're the ones that work directly with the companies when that happens. So they, they're here to listen in and answer any questions if you have on that part of the process, too. So with that, Carol, I guess we'll turn it over to you and let you uh, sort of give us a brief presentation, and then um, we'll open it up for the board. To Good. Thank you very questions. much. Um, sure. Jonathan, do you want to add anything to that before? One of, the, one of the reasons why we'd included the contract, and, and Carol's going to go through all this, but the contract has some very specific listings on, and for you in your books, it's pages 114, 115, 116 primarily, that go through the duties of the EDC, and I, I think you'll see there's quite a long list there that, that sometimes when we get in the incentive discussions and some of the other discussions, we lose track of some of the other things that, are, that they're charged with doing. And so I think he's going to talk a lot about that and, and what's included in the contract and those expectations that the board had in, in reaching this partnership agreement with them. Um, in addition, as Mike said, we included the, in, the existing incentive grant policy. Um, the one thing I'd point out to you there, and again, I'm not going to sugarcoat and go around some of the discussions we've had in the last couple of months about incentives. I just want to point out to you, it does say, under certain circumstances and conditions, it may be in the interest of the county and its citizens. So the may part is the part, you, that's why you, we bring these forward to you. So you may consider them, and, and you've had some healthy discussions about that. And so I wanted to point out that one specific part of it. And again, as Mike said, you know, we have the staff behind us that, that deals with these, and, and that's whether it's in the city or the county, or, or whether it's if it's in, you, typically with our incentives, they're in one city or another, plus the county. But either way, our tax department's the one that's doing that assessment, so they're dealing with the nuts and bolts of the incentives. So if there are any questions about any of those existing incentives mm -hmm. or about any of those processes, they're here, and they're also here just to hear your discussion. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, nice to be here tonight. Appreciate the opportunity to talk about economic development for our county. I'm not sure anything's more important under the circumstances we live in today. Before I get to answering and running over the details of the contract, I'd like to make a few comments with your permission regarding sort of what I feel that our mission may be. Um, I believe in your, uh, on your uh, iPad or hard copy in your notebook is some out, an outline of what I'd like to maybe start off with tonight, and obviously I can go in any direction that you'd like. But 131, right. 
Um, it's our feeling that the purpose of the EDC, which is neutral ground that we can all play on as equal partners, is the purpose of providing jobs and expanding the tax base. And if you take a look at the next page, why jobs? Sounds like a pretty basic question. Um, we lost two major employers here in the past 10 years that not many communities in this country faced. And we, we face that, and we are trying to get over that. I noticed recently that our unemployment rate has dropped officially below 8%, but that may be a, 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 a number that really bears study because a lot of people who were affected by these major job losses may have actually not stayed in the job market. And under those circumstances, they would not be counted in the statistics. So it's interesting uh, an item, but we ought to keep that in mind. And the next subject is uh, why grow the tax base? Um, actually, we think that's making the pie bigger. We are creating more value on the ground, which creates more opportunity and capacity for local governments, county and the municipalities to afford to fund those items you choose to fund. And under those circumstances, if we have additional people ability, having ability to pay taxes, then you have the ability to adjust the tax rate as you see fit. One doesn't have to go with the other. A larger tax base, frankly, gives us more latitude to conserve taxes, if you look at it from that perspective. It's, uh, NC State's done a study recently to show that a, a residential unit uh, cost more per dollar spent by local government than you get in return. You actually, if you want to look at it that way, you actually lose money on a residential unit. A business unit pays more taxes as a rule, and the service level is lower as a rule. And on that type of, uh, of um, factor, you actually make money on a business unit. So. If, if you look at it from that perspective, additional business investment in, in the property and, and equipment and the jobs they provide actually gives the county more latitude to lighten the tax burden on the resident. And be willing to discuss that more if you'd like. Uh, we think that economic development is a team effort. I was, uh, as Mike mentioned, I was the head of the Charlotte Chamber for over two decades. I came to Charlotte in 1984, and of all things, I found that the chamber had a lawsuit against the city of Charlotte to keep the city of Charlotte out of economic development. First thing I did is fire that lawyer because I said the city has a major role to play in economic development, as does the county have a major role. They provide the product that everybody has or needs in order to come and to grow and expand and to live here. So rather than to try to keep the city out of economic development, we need to get the city in economic development. We need to get the city and the chamber and the county understanding the different roles we can play to the best advantage and go forward in a united way. We feel that economic development is a team effort, that if we didn't have good roads, good schools, good environment, high quality of life, there really would be no reason and no, no purpose to match business with with available land and buildings, which is the client management part of the economic development equation. Is Cabarrus County a good place to do business? Well, uh, to try to answer that question, uh, we frankly need more land uh, ready to sell and we need more buildings available in order to entice people to come look at our community. It's just like having inventory. If you don't have inventory, you go to the market, you're not going to make many sales. So we've been working very hard. We have a new uh, development staff. Margie Bukowski is with us. She's not here tonight. She's under the weather today, but hopefully she'll be back tomorrow in the office. But uh, she's working very hard to get additional greenfield sites ready to sell or be certified by the state. Certified site means it's ready to go today. You can buy it today. You don't have to rezone it. You don't have to have utilities. You don't have to have rail, water, 
whatever the needs are, the site is there ready to go at this price. And that's why we need to be prepared for growth. Um, but another question is how competitive is Cabarrus County, uh, both inside of the state and outside of the state. Oftentimes we'll look, a project will look at us and they'll be looking at other counties in the Charlotte region or maybe in other parts of the state and could be looking at other states as well. Typically the larger the project, the more places they are looking. Now, move on to the subject of incentives. Um, I was before you a couple of months ago and we talked about wind shear. And that evening the decision was made not to proceed with those, with that incentive for that project. And um, incentives is an interesting thing. Um, is it more important than a qualified workforce? No. Are incentives more important than a high quality of life? No. Uh, is incentives more important than the building of a site that they, the client is looking at? No. But incentives can make a difference, particularly if we are running with, in competition with another community in the Charlotte region, for example, that can be the difference maker. Just be very frank about it, and I think you would understand that, that it would lower the cost of that project to the business applicant. So that's the, that's the truth of the matter. Um, the, the, next, the next thing in your notebook um, is a new uh, report that we'll pe be preparing and sending to the, the county and others on, on a regular basis, on a monthly basis. And this is the first edition, actually, and it's uh, summarizing activity for the month. It's a front and back single sheet of paper. This happens to be on two, but um, this shows the type of business activity we're seeing during the past month. And the next, uh, right under that, uh, projects by source, tells you where we got them from. Right below that is the type, um, the, the, the type, uh, are they looking at buildings, locations? Uh, we have a little data on the labor force. If you do the math, we have a labor force of 92,000 people. We have unemployed of just over 7,000. That works to about 7.8% uh, unemployment. Um, we picked up three new clients, so those big numbers, three and a six, uh, three new clients this past month. Uh, we, uh, from sep June to September, we've picked up six new clients. The project by source, it doesn't tell you, but we have 31 active clients at the moment. The four missed opportunities, again, on the first page. It, why did we lose these four? And it, we have the reason there. One the item, the fourth item, um, they had more water demand than was available and they had some particulate matter in what they would put back in the system we didn't think would be a good fit for us here. Uh, another part of our agreement is we work on business retention and expansion. We regularly call on industry around the county, uh, a goodwill call to find out what's on their minds, they have a problem, can we work with them? We capture and gather, aggregate that data, make it available to whomever needs to see it. And uh, we, uh, this past month, we had um, five visits, and we have those detailed there. I have some additional me meetings set up already. We are setting up new meetings on a regular basis. We also attend regularly the local government uh, meetings and stay tuned as items uh, are interesting. The next page um, goes to the state. The state of North Carolina um, has designation for working with new business or expanding business, and they've organized the state into three tiers. You probably know all this, but tier three are those communities that the state deems needs not much help. Um, tier two, they'll be a little more generous with their incentives, and tier one would be considered distressed and would possibly be getting the best incentive of all. Uh, the next sheet shows you tier one, tier two, tier three. Uh, you'll notice that um, uh, Cabarrus County is um, in tier three. Um, the next sheet shows the, the top 10 factors that uh, plant sites, uh, Global Research Corporation has assembled this for CB Richard Ellis, a real estate firm 
shows us the top 10 reasons that um, uh, corporate uh, decision makers use in, in deciding whether to expand or locate in a community. And, it, and you start number one, um, <clears throat> state and local taxes is important because that's the ongoing reality of life. Transportation is critical. <clears throat> Utilities, land and buildings. You go down the line and you see availability of incentives. Not the number one thing on the list, but it's on the list. And the state strategy, you know, where is the state going, where are they headed in terms of its strategic plan. Again, uh, the same out of that same report, uh, labor and transportation are really key, driving most decisions. Uh, available real estate, buildings, land has got to be a factor, really heavy factor. Incentives could be the tiebreaker. Just to mention the type jobs we are seeking, we prefer, we were seeking manufacturing jobs to the extent we can get them because the total jobs that are secondary jobs to manufacturing jobs, you have more jobs out of a manufacturing facility. The financial services comparison right beside it, same hundred jobs, it has a much lower secondary job impact. This is national data um, and on down the line, but it would, it's interesting information to review. Also, I'd like to take a look at some of the competing counties in our region. Lincoln County has a county-owned industrial park, and this land is available to be negotiated certain price to try to attract business there. You can see the number of projects already in that, in that particular industrial park. The next page is also, um, I believe this one happens to be in Lincoln County, is the Airly Business Park. This also is owned by the county, by Lincoln County. Um, you can see some pricing there per acre. I can go into that a little bit more. I have, the previous uh, sheet price will vary. That will vary between thirty-five and fifty thousand dollars per acre, depending upon if it's graded or not graded. Um, the next sheet is the Gaston Technology Park. The Gaston Technology Park again is owned by uh, Gaston County. Flip over to the Cabarrus um, International Business Park at Concord. Uh, that's been a really uh, important facility for us. Most of the the project is, you see the items there, the current companies within industrial, uh, the international park. Um, that, that particular asset is, is almost built out, have a few sites left, but it's not like it was obviously when it opened. We happen to have in our county three certified sites at the moment ready to go. They're all in international business park. Actually, we have one additional we, at the International Crossing at Poplar Tent International Drive. We're in the process of adding two additional sites, one in Kannapolis uh, and one down uh, in Concord. You, um, you may have heard that um, a, an out-of-town investor is planning to uh, build a um, spec building in our community and uh, it would be in Concord but certainly that's in uh, the county and um, this is strictly a schematic drawing but it's a big building that would attract big interest and we are excited about the potential of having that group come here uh, we started working with this group um, about three months ago and are very excited that that could happen um, as soon as possibly this week. Um, the, the next project on River Oaks Corporate Center, this is a, uh, a new project that um, is being proposed by Beacon uh, Development. And uh, the next sheet shows you an aerial shot of the uh, River Oaks uh, Corporate project again would be a, a business park and if you look down that runway and see the buildings on the right right behind the buildings in that clear spot is where the the 400,000 square foot spec building would go so there both of these are would be on the right of road the other sheet the next sheet 
goes into a little bit about uh, the competitive counties in our region, uh, Lincoln, Gaston, Ireland, and Cleveland, gives information about what they have available, price of land, and gentlemen and lady, uh, this is our competition in the Charlotte metro region. Um, the next sheet, got those slightly out of sequence, um, want to talk about funding the EDC. Um, Mr. Miesman and I had a discussion a month or so ago about that topic. He was very frank and um, expressed to me some frustration that he and others may feel about the EDC. Understand that? Appreciate your candor. But this is neutral ground. It's, it's an opportunity for us to stay together, working together. Uh, you have clearly, as the board, you have options. Hopefully, you would support the ongoing EDC efforts. If you have issues with that, let's talk about them, let's solve them, resolve them. If not, then you can, you can choose to play or not play. The, um, you can, we, we are, we, we heard some commentary from, from you um, a couple months ago regarding if we had something that would bring a thousand jobs. You may remember someone or two of you made a comment along those lines that you might be willing to talk to that business about helping them get here. Um, I will just say this, the larger the business, though the larger the incentive package that you'd be talking about to be competitive. Uh, for example, uh, all of you have heard of the Boeing project down in Ch near Charleston. I'll just tell you this, that package was multi-millions of incentives. Now the ocean helped because they wanted to be near a port, so there wasn't much way we could get the water up here in uh, Cabarrus County. But um, the, pro the point I'm making is uh, they looked at several sites and frankly were competing with Washington State for that very project. So um, the incentives game is something that, um, while it may not be something that we're excited about, I think I read Commissioner Morris say he wasn't exactly crazy about the idea, but uh, he understood that was part of the, the game we're in. But uh, again, I'm, I think I'm being repetitive, so I'm not going to go on on that particular topic any longer. But we would obviously be uh, listening to any changes, amendments that you wish to make to your incentive package or who would be qualified to receive that. But uh, I show you the other co counties in our region to say that I believe that working together we can even be more competitive within this region and we could be more competitive if we work together. The next sheet is a quick look at the budget of the current EDC. It's something in the neighborhood of $644,000, $44,000. It goes for those purposes that I have listed below. Uh, employee services, the employees are chamber employees and the employees are assigned to the EDC. The EDC has no official employees with the exception of an item I learned that uh, half of my compensation is paid by the EDC. I'm the only half a person that works for the EDC. Um, EDC board members, have them listed there. And um, I would like to point out that Margie, who is not here with us tonight, but uh, a little bit about her background. She's very highly qualified, well thought of in the region, works very hard, and I think we're lucky to have her. So we need you, um, you lady and gentlemen at the table. Um, the, the other data is just some background information on who's gotten incentives in the past. A little bit, the, these are attachments here are the projects that have located in North Carolina in the past 90 days. And we got a little mention on one project buried way back in the back, maybe 40 jobs out of, the, up out of what the, uh, the state has been able to do. So, we can certainly be more competitive and are prepared to do so, but we do need your help. 
So I'd be, I'd be glad to go line by line in the contract if you want to do that, or we can talk more at a direction, policy level, or we'll take your comments and suggestions uh, very seriously. So ball's in your court. Okay, open it up to any comments or questions that uh, you have, commissioners. Mr. Gray, I would just like to say uh, thank you. I had uh, breakfast with you maybe about two weeks ago, and I had breakfast with Margie last week, and um, I've enjoyed getting to know both of you, and I appreciate you coming and um, making this presentation to us. It's informative, and um, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Yep. And I'll say, you know, thank you so much. Um, it's been good to get to know you uh, since you've been um, in the interim position um, thus far. So. Uh, thanks for what you do, and I've enjoyed uh, talking with you. And I know that um, there's been mention about working forward to uh, changing uh, some of the um, some of the policy. I'll say uh, regarding the incentives, and I still want to work um, towards that. So I'm still in the process of that, and I'll be speaking with you s soon. I'm sure. So thank you. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> I just thank you also so for being here uh, you know I think that um, the arrangement that <clears throat> that we have with the chamber and with the private investors that you've listed in the, the budget here is, is a great example of how government and business can work together in private public private partnerships um, it, it's very enlightening to see what other counties are doing um, certainly when um, when we compare our efforts which which I think certainly on behalf of the EDC have been good um, I listened with great interest um, earlier this week as Rowan County uh, considered uh, a new industry there or an expansion of an existing industry I think Gildan t-shirts and things of that nature um, they and you know, we, we've had some discussion about um, tax rate being a lower tax rate being a enough of an incentive to get folks here I think Rowan County's tax rate is 0 0.6225 I, I believe is correct just just under 63 cents um, I, I wish I had the details of, of what they had done up there, but I was uh, listened, actually listened to a recording of the commissioner's <coughs> meeting. I, they extended incentives to that company over a period <coughs> of seven years, if I remember correctly. Uh, I know that I think their standard agreement is three, like ours, but they had extended that out. Um, they had some county owned property um, and I think 26 acres is the figure that I remember that they sold to this company for this expansion for one dollar um, so that's kind of indicative in addition to the information that you've given us as to to what we're competing with uh, our very next door neighbor you know I, I obviously we're closer to the airport closer to uh, Charlotte and that that gives us somewhat of an advantage so I can understand they might might have to do a little bit more but um, it, it concerns me that that we're not doing enough when compared to our peers and the people that surround us uh, so I think we need to explore ways that that we can make sure that we're competitive you know we, we in my opinion we have the quality of life we have the the schools uh, we have a lot of pieces to the puzzle uh, we have access to the airport we have the interstates so, so many advantages and we have so many opportunities uh, if we can just make sure that we stay on a level playing field with with those who surround us, uh, and I think that um, it's, it's our responsibility to make sure that happens. Uh, 
the, the industries that, that take a look at us, and particularly the, the type of industries that, that would look at a facility like the existing Philip Morris plant, are certainly going to be the ones of the size that probably uh, have the option to locate anywhere internationally they, they choose to be. So I, th I just think it's important that we have good professionals like you. Um, I think Margie is, is extremely impressive, and has a, a wonderful resume of experience with the Department of Commerce and private industry. Um, so we just uh, need to take a look at the things that we need to do to make it happen. Uh, and, and I think we can be successful. When we look at these surrounding counties that have their industrial parks, uh, you know, I have been told that um, they are very negotiable on prices for, for people bringing jobs and investment uh, to the community. So, so we've, got, we've got stiff competition, uh, it, it's obvious. And, you know, I appreciate you doing what you do. Um, I think that um, you know, your effort, you can only be so successful without the support of this board. So uh, as one member, um, I certainly want to do what we can do to, to support your efforts and make us successful. Um, and I think you did a good job of describing what happens when we build the tax base, we make the pie bigger. Uh, and the slice that has to be taken by the residential taxpayer gets smaller, or certainly has the potential to. So thank you for pointing those things out. Yes, sir. Thank you. Carol, I got a question. Why, why um, what are the pros and cons of the current situation, the current setup as an independent body funded by governmental jurisdictions and private. What's the, what are the pros and cons of that versus the pros and cons if it was associated with the county or a city or you know, what, in, in your expert or, or in your opinion? It can work either way. <clears throat> um, where you have a capable business community um, with the resources to participate, um, it's much better in my opinion that you take advantage of those private dollars and private uh, energy to help make the program more effective. Uh, in Charlotte, for example, uh, Mr. Osterreich, you and I talked about this. Um, over the years, the business community in, in Charlotte, Mecklenburg County have felt that they would assume the entire 100% load for economic recruiting. Um, that came on the, on the heels of the chamber inviting the city and the county to the table to be full players. Initially, the first three years that we did the, the, the strategic plan, uh, the city and the county did play a role, uh, a, a minor role to the private investment and um, economic recruiting. As we got further into the the next five-year plan, uh, the business community picked up all the dollars at that point. Today in Mecklenburg County, the city nor the county put any direct money into the recruiting of uh, business or expansion of business. And they work very hard and as, a, as, a very, as a partner. If an industry has a problem, the city or the county is all over it to try to help work out the issue. So I'm not saying they don't expend dollars and energy to play their role in economic development, but in terms of prospect recruiting and management, they don't, they don't fund any of it. <coughs> now the flip side of that is the regional partnership. The regional partnership actually started um, at the chamber in Charlotte and for reasons was spun away as a separate entity. Today the state, you mentioned earlier, Mike, the state, the state now is changing their recruiting program. And they're now seeking private dollars to supplant and expand, extend the public dollars. So the vision of the governor and the Senate and the House is that the private dollars can extend the public dollars, get more out of it. 
On the other hand, in Mecklenburg County, the feeling the prospect side of that by proper definition of roles and economic development, everybody is content with the way that pie is sliced. Now, to go in and say to the city and the county, do you put any money in economic development, they'd probably say, well, how many, how many millions do you want to take out of our budget and assign to that? But because they are spending huge amounts of money on roads and, and, and sewer and infrastructure and, and that kind of thing. So it's a it, it's huge amount of money into the, into the pot of economic growth. <coughs> and as a result of that, uh, Charlotte from, I, I was lucky to join the team when I did, but it, came, it became a, just a mid-sized southern city to one of the nation's hottest communities. And it still is. Uh, we, they, they'd like to make it a little hotter, but um, it's, it still is doing quite well. Um, so I'm not sure I answered directly your question, Mike, in that respect, but um, the... Um, I can't, I can't stress the importance of teamwork. Um, there may be issues that we need to address as part of that. It's just like uh, my wife and I have been married almost 48 years, and we've had issues from time to time, but we try to work through them and keep our eye on the goal, and that's to be a couple for as long as we can be. And I think, if I may use that corny analogy, um, any disagreement we have could be temporary in passing. I hope so. I just want to thank you for being here and thank you for the information. Uh, the uh, quick trip convenience store has been built in Cabarrus County now. What was the cost on each one of them? Their estimate now, I don't know that this was over a million dollars. It was, it was about $2 million per, per unit. unit. Did they ask for incentives? They did not. Wonder why. Wonder why they come to Cabarrus County. I guess I don't know. I know they're growing all over the southeast, or at least in this region. They have about seven units here. Uh, six, I think. Six, I think. Now, I just wondered if they uh, asked for incentives. Two million includes their inventory and everything. I don't know. And Brent may be able to tell you better what the tax value on one of those is when they're when they're finished. But but it's about two million for the total development of one. That included land. Yes, sir. <coughs> Since we have have a moment of silence here, I don't want to that to last too long. <laughs> And we've still got time left on the agenda, but um, I would mention one thing. I've had discussions with, with Mr. Gray um, and with the folks from our tax department also. Uh, one of the comments that I've heard um, over the last several years are incentives. If, if, if a large company gets an incentive, then everybody should get an incentive. So I took our existing incentive policy and made some alterations to it um, and, and, then, and then, then asked for advice and opinions from folks about it. Uh, of course, the, the responses that I got back were, well, this is going to be difficult to administer. You know, if you offer uh, incentives, and, and there has a very low threshold on it, but it would enable um, an existing uh, small business, if they were going to expand their <coughs> restaurant or whatever type of business they were in, it would give them an opportunity to participate in that program. Um, and I think maybe that's something we might talk about and look at going forward. Uh, I understand what, what you said. I understand what tax folks said. It, it comes with some comes with some expenses to administer that type of program and do the things that, that, that you need to, to do to make sure that they're following that agreement. Um, haven't really pursued that because of the, uh, uh, the fact that it seems that this, this board does not have a majority willing to improve incentives at this point in time. Um, other things that, that I have thought about a great deal were some of the comments about 
And I'd like to hear your feedback on this. Um, the um, well, we we might consider something if it was a thousand jobs, or if it was for the Philip Morris facility. Um, you know, my response to that has been, I think that most of these companies that of that size that, that are looking for a location are going to be looking for an incentive package because they're, they're, they have enough. It's like you mentioned the Boeing project. There was a, a major piece of that deal. Uh, my concern is that these folks that might be interested in that are looking at us, looking at, at our track record and the fact that we've turned down incentives for an expanding industry, and maybe we never know they're looking at us. Uh, we get scratched off the list before, I mean, with today's, the amount of information that's available online, on the internet, and so forth. So I'd like, how would you respond to that? Do you think that's accurate? Do you think that, that we're being looked at by some folks that we're not aware of, uh, that, that just go away quietly? Obviously, in, in the technology age, we're looked at all the time. And word is out communication gets around um, I'm totally astounded about by how people communicate how young people and older people I have a father-in-law who's 92 he's active in Facebook so that's just blows my mind in some ways but um, yes I think that we are constantly being looked at and I think our reputation precedes us very clearly in this arena it's not unlike um, recruiting an athlete to a college, um, highly competitive. Your opposition is trying to point out all the problems that the other school has and why you ought to go to this school and not that school. So it, it is highly competitive and it gets very personal. Uh, recruiting business is, um, is a big, big money game and uh, because we're talking about millions of dollars investment and, and a lot of jobs that come with it, um, the reputation of a community certainly precedes it, and their, the community's interest in being business supportive. One of the things I'm concerned about, I've never heard anybody on this board say this, is that you're not pro-business. I've never heard that. Um, how one would interpret the action of the board regarding not approving incentives um, is, is problematic. Let's be frank about that and how it would affect someone. I don't know if, um, if a search for some company might begin with searching counties that have incentives. Um, technically, we still have incentives in Cabarrus County, but I, I, I sense that you may want to change that or, or may intend to change that uh, policy. But um, it does have its consequences. I would also say this, that um, for the past four years, I've been doing a little consulting with Huntersville, Cornelius, Davidson, and Morrisville. And we were talking about at one time uh, trying to get commuter rail up there and back every day. Lowe's, as you know, is in Morrisville at the end of that potential line in downtown Charlotte's other end. You need something on each end to have a successful uh, rail system. And the discussion among the towns is, well, we don't necessarily want that kind of development coming into our community, whatever it may have been. And the point I made to one of the communities, and you probably can figure it out, I said, well, you can decide what you want by your policies. If you want to screen in a type of development as part of your incentive profile, that's absolutely up to you. That we prefer this kind of business, and here's what we'll do to encourage that business to come here. It's a very clear statement. You can be selective. You can make the number go higher for qualifying or go lower. That's up to you. I mean, the, this whole incentive thing, it does not have to be this way or nothing. It could be something that you can, you cut the cloth to fit the pattern. So I would encourage you to consider, uh, as Commissioner Miesma just said, uh, making some changes in the program. And I would encourage that. Everything needs a fresh look. The other other question that I, I would ask, and <clears throat> uh, I had a lady come up to me at a public function the other night and say, you know, 
the, the thing that I don't like about incentives, I understand why you might want to do that and why that may help us get new industry, but, but they're, you know, once, once we give them that money, which that's the number one myth, we don't give them money. We don't give them any taxpayer dollars. These are dollars that they bring and, and, and after they've done certain things, they, they get it back. But that, that was her second point is they're never held accountable. Uh, you know, they say that they're going to do these things and, and, and nobody, you, you know, there's no, there's no checks and balances to make sure that they do them. Um, it's not true, sir, as you well know. We These gentlemen the back here make sure of that, uh, for example. Um, the sale I, I, think, I think there was. I, I wasn't part of that process, so I don't know, John, what well, you guys may know in the back. The sale guard. I think uh, it was about $700,000, wasn't it? Uh, between the city and the county. Yeah. But, but was, it, was it cash or was it, it was cash utilities? And, it was cash. I think it was a combination of yeah. things, if I remember correctly. I, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll find it out. Take a look at page 158 in your, in, in your book. I'm, I may have included that information here. It shows the companies that have uh, received grants since 2004. And in the fourth column over, it's the amount of money the company has invested in our, in our community. And so, let's, even if we did, and of course I wasn't on board at the time, if there was a cash payment sale guard, I think enough years have elapsed that we have exceeded that amount in the taxes that we have collected from them. This information shows us that sale guard invested $105 million. Right. Um, so, so we would recoup that. Pre but the point that I was making is my answer to her was, yes, they are held accountable. Yes. Uh, you know, I, to, the, to the extent that um, the, the plan that I mentioned earlier for <coughs> smaller, smaller investments, the, the primary concern that I had in establishing that was most small, smaller businesses would not want to go through the process mm -hmm that the larger companies have to go through to get these incentives, which, you know, uh, the fellows from the tax department can enlighten us, but they audit them yearly. Yes. Uh, come, come on up, Bill. Bill, yeah, you can come up I, on the I'd, I'd love for you to explain the process for us. <clears throat> Just need to get you on the tape, so. That's Need to, we need to get you in front of a microphone so they can hear you on the tape. Okay. I will attempt to be fairly brief, but uh, my name is Bill Corey, and this is Kevin Gates. And Kevin is um, our auditor, and um, I'm the manager of the area. Uh, yes, we, we do audit, and uh, we're, we're very formal about that, and we're uh, uh, very uh, assiduous about it. And we want to make sure that we get the proper documentation, we get the depreciation schedules, the general ledger, trial balances, that type of thing, look at their expenditures, and we try to be very thorough that they are compliant in terms of uh, declaring everything that would be taxable for ad valorem purposes uh, in a compliant manner. So we do, uh, we're very vigorous in, in that respect. I just wanted to make one comment. We were talking earlier about our reputation preceding us, about the potential that um, uh, we had denied the wind shear incentive. I mean, that's the number nine category on this list from Site Selection Magazine, which I suspect knows what they're talking about. The number one factor on that list is the state and local tax scheme. Now, we had a tax increase in this county 18 months ago. Now, now perhaps that reputation has preceded us. and. Um, I, for one, have proposed a plan tonight that would lower our tax rate by 10 percent. And that is addressing the number one factor on this list, not the number nine factor. So um, I, I think that would give us a very positive reputation amongst the businesses, uh, large and small, both here and uh, outside, that we were a very pro-business uh, and pro-jobs county. 
Did the uh, sale guard ever have 223 employees out there? I'm, I don't know their employee count right at this point in time, and we're, we're in the middle of beginning negotiations for um, a value to establish their 2013 real estate, and uh, we're in the midst of seeking financial information to verify uh, the reporting. Uh, if, if I believe if I take a look at the, the agreement, I don't think in the stipulation that there's a, there may be a certain number, a certain count for one of the phases uh, for payroll purposes. Uh, I can't give you that count now. We're all very preliminary in those stages. We've got some carry forward balance, in fact, from the prior year to work on and to work off uh, of that particular grant. So I, I, can't, I can't speak to that right now. But most, most of the money they spent out there was uh, stimulus funds, wasn't it, from the federal government? And there was some, and again, I, I don't know all the particulars. We'll get those get those details for you. So, but I, I don't know all of them. I think the job was actually Indian tied to the energy. state grant. The, uh, is that a J Dig or uh, North Carolina One grant? I think that was in conjunction with ours that had the job requirements, and we sort of adopted that as long as they were in compliance with the state. But uh, and there were so. federal grant. Right. dollars now to the extent mm -hmm. I, I couldn't give you the there was uh, right. some energy energy stimulus that's funds correct. And stuff. Yeah. Uh, Carol how, I know I've been asking I, I think talking with a couple of the board members too just by the general public I live in a hundred fifty thousand dollar house I pay my taxes every year why why do a what in your give incentives incentives to businesses are we give incentives to businesses how does that benefit me as an individual property owner? I don't see anything on my tax bill, but you're telling me it benefits me. How, how, how do you answer that? I, w I would say to a citizen that this, that it, to the extent that business is invested in this community, that the, the impact of the direct dollars of investment and in the, in the spend, it would help, again, depending upon the type of business. Financial services has a lower, lower impact Wrote, uh, value than a manufacturing job does. But now those are just the initial impacts. One of the points we made, you may recall from the wind shear proposal, is this addition to their $40 million initial investment would basically bring all out of town uh, clientele to this project. Commissioner, I think you went out actually got a first hand look at that yourself. And, and I think that that those the average stay for a client would be one week they would be visitors staying in hotels they would visit the restaurants and retail facilities um, <coughs> and other types of expenditure that would not be counted in the direct investment number this would be the multiplier that would happen throughout our community so I would say to the person to the extent that you care about um, the, the larger tax base to help carry some of the load and to the extent you care about the ancillary business that would come as, an imp as a result of the initial investment, then those are the benefits and it creates. You may, you may not deal directly with it, but if you or the, hu the husband or wife or the children are involved in any endeavor that would get secondary a third, if someone who works for a hotel that wind shear would bring in here and they would get more hours or take home a bigger paycheck and they would use those dollars to go buy something at a grocery store then that grocery store benefits from that impact from the wind shear project so particularly with the out-of-town money coming in that would be the value now that's a that's not an elevator answer that's a conversation an elevator speech is it helps carry the tax load all of us have to bear that would be my elevator speech. If, if after multiple discussions between our board and, and if, if it's to modify the current plan, to leave the current plan as it does as it does still say may uh, consider incentives, uh, or if it comes out and says, um, we're just not doing any kind of incentive. 
is there still value to having an, an EDC office? I'm sorry, what was the last thing you said? If Mike? we don't participate in incentives, if for some reason it comes up that we're never going to do another incentive, is there still positive value in, in having an EDC office? Of course. Why? Team effort on many other reasons that we work with the county. We don't just work with the county on incentives. I mean, that's one way. But I heard discussion tonight with uh, Dr. Spaulding, community college, uh, very important to the process of workforce development, workforce training. So to the extent you help the community college system, it's helping economic development. To the extent you help your public schools, you're helping economic development, because that's where the employees are going to come from. Um, I think maybe I've said this, and I probably won't just say it, but I'll say it. Um, I had a headmaster come up to me one time, private school, said, you're always talking about public schools, so we got private schools. I said, we're delighted, to, great to have private schools. Love you, but um, a good percentage of your graduates are going to go off to college and may wind up going somewhere else. The public school system provides <coughs> the majority of our employees for our local business and industry, and we really need good public schools. Nothing against the private school system, but that's my answer regarding our public schools. So yes, you are great, you're, you're at the table. Um, as I had said before, I think I would like to characterize this as issues of disagreement among a, a pro business pro growth community and I hope we can keep it at that level I, I would like to add a little to that if I may and and I have served on the board of the economic development corporation for a, a number of years in the past do not currently um, I think that we are getting you know, your your question revolved around incentives and and that as I've said before, is one piece of the puzzle. That's one of the things, and, and we have a lot of different pieces. Um, I think that the, the importance of, of what our Economic Development Corporation does is more significant the smaller number of pieces that we might have. You know, that's when we need to market ourselves even more uh, and, and place the emphasis, whether it be on the tax rate, <coughs> or the schools, or the sites, uh, et cetera, the amenities that, that we offer. Um, and I think that we as a county, on behalf of our taxpayers, get a much better deal, a lot more bang for our buck when we have got uh, private investors involved in the process. We have the municipalities and the counties contributing to the process uh, as opposed to the county trying to do it on our own, then the full expense would be ours. Uh, and then we would have an additional expense on our municipalities doing their part of, of that. Most of us, I, I can't, I don't know about everybody in here. I live in a city and a county. So if the, if the county's paying for it and the city's paying for it also, uh, then, then that, that comes back to me. So, so I like that cooper cooperation of folks working together. I think that, that uh, my experience in the past has been that, that our economic development corporation does not really see municipal boundaries. Uh, they, they show the sites throughout the county equally uh, and I think our municipalities are, are happy when they're there, but they understand that it's going to be at different places all the time. So I think that we can always talk about how we can maximize that opportunity or, or how we might be able to make that better. But I think all of us working together is going to bring us a better result than, than everybody working apart. Uh, so, so I hope that we'll be able to, to fine tune that that effort uh, and uh, and make the very best out of it we can and I think we can do that but let me respond and again if um, I noticed that one of the couple of commissioners maybe checking the clock out there a minute but um, I would just like to say that um, 
where we need to be, uh, we've all, I think we're in strong agreement that there are other ways the county can play a helpful role in economic development beside incentives. Uh, we've talked about the schools and the community colleges and, and ways of that nature, the environment itself. But if, if we could, uh, I, I would hope that this commission would, would try to study this question. How can we help business come here and expand here? It's all, it's all part of the attitude, I believe, that we need to show people that we have a pro-business attitude if, in fact, that's what we have. And how can we be part of helping businesses that are here grow here? If, and it doesn't have to be a cash grant. We can help in other ways. We could help, we talked about competition that there could be investment in property, strategic investment in property that could be made available. That's in a way cash, but it's, it's an incentive. And, and I mean, it comes under the heading of do we want business to grow here? And let's find a way that we can agree that this is how we're gonna help business grow. Those that are here and those that we want. I mean, I, I have a hard time believing that, we, that that's not part of our vision. But I've enjoyed here. I feel like I've talked too much. I apologize for that. My mom told me I do, but uh, I've had to fight that all, all my life. We were here to hear from you tonight, Mr. Gray, so we appreciate all the good information you've given us. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> well, that uh, concludes our agenda. Anybody have anything to add tonight? We have a work session coming up, or actually regular meeting regular meeting coming up next week and then uh, with the work session we'll start adding some of these topics back on maybe as items or we'll go ahead and uh, uh, schedule at the work session of the regular meeting some get, pull some dates from you guys to start setting, setting up some parking lot type meetings to really dig into some of these other issues so okay great well thank Carol you. thanks thanks for thank being here much. guys thank you, uh, thank you thank for you uh, adding your yeah. comments as well sure. Uh, and uh, Do you, that. anybody have anything else you want to say before we recess I just wanted to say thank you to the staff for putting this together and for working so hard today this was a long day for Megan taking notes and for Pam and Jonathan to sit here and to be great sources of uh, resources for us and I appreciate it thank you anybody else okay if there's nothing else I need a motion to recess until October 21st at 630 have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, good night to everybody. See you on the 21st.